Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Declare, if you know. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Who stretched the line upon it? On what were its bases sunk? And who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Who shut in the sea with doors? When it burst forth from the womb, when I made clouds its garment, and thick darkness its swaddling band, and prescribed bounds for it, and set bars and doors, and said, Thus far shall you come, and no further, and here shall your proud waves be stayed. Have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place? Have you entered into the springs of the sea or walked in the recesses of the deep? Have the gates of death been opened under you? And have you seen the doors of the shadow of death? Deck yourself with majesty and dignity, clothe yourself with glory and splendor, pour forth the overflowing of your anger, look upon every one that is proud and abase him, and tread down the wicked where they stand, hide them all in the dust together, bind their faces in the world below, then will I acknowledge to you that your own hand can save you. The Book of Job tells the story of a righteous man who suffers terrible affliction as the result of a kind of casual wager between God and Satan. And when Job calls on God to explain himself, he receives the answer we've just heard. Taken at face value, it's not a particularly helpful response to someone who's trying to understand the age-old theological conundrum of why God allows bad things to happen to good people. But Jewish rabbinic interpretation has never been about taking texts at face value. David Friedman. Why do the righteous suffer? That's the ultimate question. But for me, it seems to imply that what is significant is not my understanding of God, but rather God's appreciation of who I am and what I've become. And the book says, you will never understand my essence. But the Bible itself starts in the same way. Uh, In fact, the book of Job in Talmudic literature is considered a very old book. Job is, even though it comes later in the Bible, Job is almost a contemporary of, of Moses. And so to relate it to the early chapters of Genesis would not be too far-fetched. So if you take, for example, the opening, however you translate the Hebrew words, Bereshit, Barai, Lukim, Et HaShomayim, Vet Aretz, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, it doesn't explain the origin of God. All that's important is that we understand our place in this universe in relation to God, and then our place or our role in this universe, in relation to each other. It's one of those fascinating aspects of uh, Judaic literature that the Talmud never starts on page one. Few Jewish books start on page one. We always start on page two. And again, even if you look at the letter of the alphabet with which, and the rabbis ask this question many times, the first letter of the Bible is the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the letter bet. The first letter is aleph. Like the Greek letters alpha, beta, we have aleph, bet. So they say, why is the second letter chosen? Why wouldn't we start with the first letter of the alphabet? And the rabbis explain that the very shape of the letter, which is almost like three sides of a square, that you can go only one way out. You can go, so to speak, forwards, but you can't go backwards through that line. That's our destiny as human beings, to look forward, to improve, and not worry too much about the past, or in this case, not worry too much. God has got God's things to worry about. We have our things to worry about. <laughs> 